Hello, everyone. My name is Elde Brova, and I'm a PhD candidate in the politics program, University of Otago, New Zealand. Before I start, I would like to read out loud a few recent headlines from the websites of some of the biggest Russian TV channels, which I believe will make the topic of my presentation clear. So, TV channel Russia One, January 2018. Cristiano Ronaldo is again suspected of having a non-traditional orientation. December 2018. According to the Metropolitan Elarion, non-traditional orientation is rooted in nurture, not nature. December 2019. Alcohol, depression, non-traditional orientation. Revelations by Dima Bilan. January 2020. A star of famous Sirius acknowledged his non-traditional orientation. January 2020. A teacher who was accused of having non-traditional orientation lodged a complaint to the police. REN TV, October 2020. Putin told about his attitude towards non-traditional marriages. December 2020. A female Moscow resident had her skull bashed in the subway due to her non-traditional orientation. So, today, as you have likely already understood, I would like to give a presentation about the othering of LGBT plus people in Russia through euphemisms in the media about sexual orientation. LGBT plus people in Russia have been othered by the current political regime for over a decade. The main contributor to this process is the national heteronormative ideology of traditional family values that has been reinforced top down. The most important means for the state's ideology dissemination are mass media. The absolute majority of Russian mass media have been under direct or indirect state control since the early 2000s. Thus, it is not surprising that it's quite easy for the current authoritarian political regime in Russia to ensure that mass media are dominated by narrative sentiments, ideas and views that reinforce government preferred messages and strengthen the traditional values ideology. State affiliated mass media in Russia have played a significant role in the escalation of intolerance, prejudice, and hatred toward, towards the LGBT plus community through the active spread of anti-LGBT sentiments and ideas. One of the most interesting ways that has been widely used in the mass media discourse in the country is euphemistic referencing of non-heterosexuals as having non-traditional sexual orientation. The euphemism has become arguably the most common and often the only way to talk about LGBT plus people in Russian media. Let's have a look at the roots and the background of this euphemism. Back in the 1990s, after the USSR collapsed and the iron curtain that separated countries of the socialist bloc from capitalist ones was lifted, floods of information around sex issues started coming into the country from the West. The overwhelming amount of explicitly sexualized images and information, including the surround LGBT+, did not work towards forming a balanced understanding of sexuality among the unprepared population. And some Russians were taken aback and started associating all things Western with immorality, perversion, and permissiveness. The coincidence of the economic and political uncertainty in the country, the demographic decline, and the sudden visibility of sexuality in general, and homosexuality in particular, created an impression that the things were in some way connected. That, in turn, provoked a backlash among conservative part of the population. Due to the economic abyss that the country plunged into after the extremely poor attempt to be democratized in the 1990s, imitating Western liberal, uh, liberal practices, many Russians felt alienated from the whole idea of democratization 
and West in general. The turmoil that political authorities desperately try to alleviate and the newly introduced market economy not comprehensible for the Soviet population, which was used to the state uh, planning, significantly contributed to many males finding themselves not able to adjust to the changing realities. Over the course of the 1990s, the discourse related to masculinity crisis in Russia became widespread. Male unemployment, alcoholism, and mortality rates rose while an average male life expectancy plummeted to 58 years. The change happening with the country was painted with uncertainty, instability, impoverishment of the population, and the breaking down of old worldviews and values. Some people started to feel nostalgia for the perceived stability and predictability of all times, and the reference to tradition entered the vocabulary of the public sphere. Traditional was quickly equated with heterosexual relationships and patriarchal gender order and roles, which were perceived as normal. In the public discourse, non-heterosexual celebrities became to be referred to as having non-traditional sexual orientation. However, in general, there was no particular hostility towards this non-traditionality. And the societal attitudes towards homosexuality were even slowly improving. It can be argued that until 2005, sexual minorities in Russia did not cause any special wars to the authorities. However, this changed when top-down political measures started to be introduced in the middle 2000s, a base for which was already prepared by the actively happening masculinization of the country and Putin's personal image. Gradually, the top-down traditionalist conservative agenda with sexual moralism as its cornerstone started to be introduced into the policies and practices across the whole country. Firstly, in 2006, the Pride Parade was banned by the Moscow mayor, Yuri Lushkov, and the same prohibition was issued over the two subsequent years. Between 2006 and 2012, a number of regional laws were initiated that prohibited propaganda of non-traditional sexual relations. And later, in 2013, the federal law of similar content was adopted. The ag agenda I'm speaking about is termed traditionalist since its main components are backed with the concept of traditional values. The agenda has been strengthened since uh, 2012 that signified the conservative turn in Russian politics that appeared to be a response to the mass Balotnaya Square protests against the results of the legislative and presidential elections that were widely perceived as fraudulent and involved a range of restrictive political measures. Importantly, from the very beginning, the conservative turn introduced the massive promotion of traditionalist morality and various restrictions of non-traditional sexuality. In 2012, the dominant political narrative defining Russia as an international beacon of traditional values began to be actively const constructed. In general, these traditional values understood to mean the rejection of LGBT rights, abortion, reproductive technologies, and feminism in favor of perceived natural gender roles family relations, patriotism, orthodoxy, and spirituality. Also, sharing these values has been constructed as a precondition of national belonging. Thus, the term non-traditional has become a negative characteristic. Interestingly, the division between traditional and non-traditional is represented as being clear-cut and is manifested in contrast with the West. In the top-down political discourse within the country, Russian national identity is painted in conservatism and based on the denial of the Western liberalism and values related to it, 
including in particular LGBT rights. The West has been the significant other for Russian national identity for centuries. And the current opposition is just another or arguably very strong uh, swing towards the anti-West direction. The swing, however, has its specifics because it is currently painted in explicit homophobia and the euphemism of non-traditional orientation for non-heterosexuality has played its part. In particular, it has contributed to framing LGBT plus people as dangerous internal others, while also portrayed as representing an external other, the West, that Putin's political regime has been trying to prove moral superiority over in order to legitimate its own continuation. The understanding of sexual minorities as being non-traditional migrated from the public discourse of the 1990s, where it was widely used, as I mentioned earlier, to the legal, political, and media discourses turning out into an official term. This euphemistic way of reference, in essence, represents the deliberate pushing sexual and gender minorities out of the boundaries of social acceptable and plays a significant role in the process of othering, silencing, and stigmatizing LGBT plus individuals in today's Russia. The idea that LGBT people embody something that is inherently alien to authentic Russianness has been deliberately and repeatedly reinforced by many mass media, mainly through the use of the euphemism that has uh, become normalized and widely used. Positioned this way, sexual minorities have found themselves being regarded as abnormal and antagonistic to the imagined portrayal of native traditional Russians with their conservative, patriarchal, and anti-liberal views. This delusive vision of Russian traditions, however, have very, very little to do with actual traditions due to the ethnic and cultural diversity of various peoples who have been living in the huge country for centuries. Alarmingly though, due to the state homophobic propaganda via mass media, there are signs of the normalization of these homophobic attitudes among the general Russian population. To sum up, the euphemistic way of referencing non-heterosexual people in Russian media as having non-traditional orientation has served to the political regime in its purposes of silencing, othering, and stigmatizing LGBT plus individuals in the country and deprive them of their rights, identity, and opportunity to be heard and seen. In this case, euphemization serves for clear cut separation between right and wrong, good and bad. But the real life is never that simple and unambiguous. Black and white are not the only options. Rather, there are all the rainbow colors in between. Thank you for your attention.